Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. You can always join us on WhatsApp 020 216633. Now, the Daily Guide this morning reports that Amidu submits evidence in 47 million uh, euros Waterville debt. Kofi Boachi denies coup plot as uh, some senior officers have been fingered in that alleged coup by Dr. Mark Palmer and his uh, conspirators, as the court has called them. Government injects $600 million into cocoa sector. Court throws out UCC over projects and A3N2 disease strikes at Krobo schools. The BNFT terminating PDS deal makes economic sense. Professor Quarte of ISE prompt contractors payments could significantly reduce non-performing loans, according to the Bank of Ghana. And a final newspaper, students of three SHSs uh, quarantined over uh, H3N2 influenza, animal to human diseases rising, West Africa Health Organization outlines solutions, and $600 million stimulus package to increase cocoa production uh, to 1.5 metric tons by 2027. Banks record 2.24 billion profit in third quarter. Influenza cases in three schools uh, under control. The daily graphic this morning says that election year mustn't derail fiscal stability precedent. Uh, fallouts from the cabinet meeting yesterday at the Pejasi uh, Lodge. Communications ministry sued over talk tax and $600 million dollars to rebound cocoa sector will move production from 700,000 to 1.5 metric tons. And my guest this morning is Felix Kwachi Ofosu. He is the parliamentary candidate for the Abure Asebu Kwamankese uh, on the ticket of the NDC. Good to see you, Chief. So How are you doing? You, He's I'm also great. a former deputy minister, by the way. How are you doing? Congratulations. Well, Congratulations to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Let's see, how are the grounds? Well, it's going well. Um, I was there over the weekend okay. uh, to join the people of Idumfa, mm. New Ebu, mm. and Abuini okay. uh, to celebrate three important festivals. Okay. So it was a joyous occasion filled with pomp and circumstance, mm. and, and it was a delight to be there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Let's, let's look at, um, I, I'm, I, I'm sure you've been following the fallouts from the, <coughs> the cabinet um, uh, meeting. 600 million cities, uh, million dollars, we're told, is, will be injected into the um, cocoa sector, sourced from the African Development Bank. The question I'm, I'm on my mind at this point is the objective that we hope to reach, especially knowing that we have done the 1 million before, and we're looking at doing 1 million, maybe a little over it. But the key question is, what is the African Development Bank seeking in return for this, if you like, favor? And for how long are we going to be servicing this? Your thoughts? <coughs> well, I'm not sure that it is a favor. Um, <laughs> as far as I know, banks are not in the habit of doing favors <laughs> to their clients. Mm -hmm. So the African Development Bank is a development-oriented organization, mm -hmm. I would like to believe. So when they advance such credit mm -hmm. to countries, they expect that uh, the monies are paid in, in, in due course. Mm -hmm. So the onus lies on the receiving country mm -hmm. to utilize the resources in a manner that is judicious mm -hmm. and is able to yield dividends. Mm -hmm. That would then make it easy for the country to pay back. Okay. So we need to put that in proper perspective. Mm -hmm. But you see, the, the decision by this government to access this facility, once again, calls into question their sincerity. Why? Because they, they bastardized the very concept of borrowing. I mean, they used all manner of expressions. At one point, we were told that if governance was just about borrowing, uh, the 18-year-old sons of some MPP functionaries could run the country. So uh, it's too too easy mm. that once they come into power, they will limit the amounts that they would borrow mm. to reflect the stance that they adopted whilst in opposition. Mm. At the last count, our public debt had ballooned from 120 billion Ghana cities in 2016 mm to 204 billion Ghana cities as of July this year. That is an increase of 84 billion Ghana cities. That's okay. almost $17 billion. $17 billion. All right. Now, it is instructive to observe that there is nothing concrete that one can lay hands on mm. and point to as the direct outcome of this sort of borrowing. 
free SHS? Well, free SHS is funded with Planting oil money. For no, free SHS is funded with oil money, about 13 billion of it mm. since 2017. Right. So I'm not sure that it can be highlighted as one of the things that borrowed money has been used for. In any event, if <laughs> government was borrowing, to finance free SHS, it will be an extremely responsible thing to do because you do not borrow to finance recurrent expenditure. Mm -hmm. Borrowing is normally used for capital investments, mm -hmm. which yield dividends that you then are able to use to pay back okay. for the loan. And indeed, Dr. Baumia and President Akufuado mm -hmm. uh, raised hell in this country when the previous government was borrowing and investing same in capital projects that were verifiable. But in their case, there's hardly anything that one can point to as a direct, direct outcome of this borrowing. Indeed, it has been used to finance consumption. Really? Absolutely. Because in the absence of evidence of capital expenditure, the only other reason that you can cite for borrowing is consumption. Consumption is when you use money to finance recurrent expenditure. That is expenditure that comes up every year, and free SHS is, is one of them. So I cannot agree. Okay. With, the, with the notion that free SHS... Planting for food and jobs. Is all, of it, one all of it, all of it, all of it. Planting for foods and one jobs. Village, one again, um, again, planting for foods and jobs mm -hmm. must be clarified as well. It started on the back of a $125 million Canadian, sorry, $125 million Canadian dollar grant mm -hmm. from the Canadian government, which the NDC had applied for, but which arrived just at the time that we had left office. Mm -hmm. So it was the outcome of a grant given to this government by the Canadian government. Mm. I am not sure that this government can claim that any of the borrowed money has gone into that. That simply would not make sense because the budget does not support that assertion. So, so one, saying, village, one village, one dam, mm. again, is money that is coming from the capping of statutory funds mm. and other sources from the budget. So it also cannot be passed off mm. as evidence of expenditure emanating from borrowing. So you're saying so, that the, the government has just spent all the money is they borrowed. Well, unless they are able to show us in concrete terms what they've used the money for, mm. their assumption, and it's a safe one, would be that they have spent it on consumption, recurrent expenditure. But are I was you making not, the point. Are you not being too hard on the government? No, I'm not. We'll, well come back to the cook. Well, I'm not, I'm not being too hard. Look, I have been in government before. Mm. I was a deputy minister for communications. It was my duty to communicate what government had done. Mm. So at every point, I could furnish the public with tangible evidence of what we had used the borrowing for. Mm. In the health sector alone, we spent close to $2 billion on dozens of modern health projects, mm -hmm. all of which you see. When you go to the Ridge mm -hmm. Runabout right now, mm -hmm. close to it is a massive Ridge Hospital. Right. It is a direct outcome of borrowing that mm -hmm. we did. It cost $200 million to put up, $250 million to put up. If you go to Legon right now, mm -hmm. the University of Ghana Medical Center, it cost $217 million. Mm -hmm. That is a direct outcome of borrowing. If you go to Tema, Mm -hmm. Community 3, I believe, around the Avi Maria area, where the port is. There is the International Maritime Hospital. There are at least seven district hospitals mm -hmm. that we undertook under what we call the NMS project. In addition to that, there was a Eurojet project, mm -hmm. which we had to give promissory notes to the contractor to raise bonds, $380 million of it, mm -hmm. to construct. There are dozens of health centers. Indeed, before President Mama left office, mm -hmm. he found money 23 million euros to finance the construction of about 20 polyclinics, 10 of them in the central region alone, and about five of them in the greater Accra region, another five in the Volta region. So we can show tangible output, specific things that we used borrowed money for. In the water sector, another close to $1.5 billion was spent to give water to an additional 7 million Ghanaians. In fact, the Pong Water project alone, it cost $276 million to fix. It provides water for 700,000 inhabitants mm -hmm. of the northeast, sorry, northeastern part of Accra and parts of the eastern region. That is 70 communities. And the situation is the same across this country. I can show you evidence of the work that we did with it. Go to aviation. There is a Terminal 3 project. Mm -hmm. There is a Kumasi, uh, uh, what do you call it, International Airport project. You go to Ho, mm -hmm. there is the Ho uh, uh, Airport. There's a Tamale International Airport and other such facilities that I can point to. If you come to the communication sector, we left a data center, a massive data center, right at the Ministry of Communications for, for, for the people of Ghana. Uh, we did the Accra Digital Center, which benefits the people of Ghana. So as for the investments that we made, 
they are real, they can be felt. Mm -hmm. But the same cannot be said for the new patriotic party. That bastardized borrowing, that claim that we were borrowing to finance consumption, and yet has been in power, has received close to $18 billion in borrowed funds, and is unable to account for it in terms of tangible the, the, the government says this $600 million uh, in injection or stimulus package is to raise our production uh, of cocoa. Then we're looking at a uh, pharma database, we're looking at uh, fertilizers, sub subsidy, we're looking at so many other things. I, I'll, I'll pick your thoughts on that, but let me introduce Mr. Eric Chum. He's a member of the MPP's communication team, and uh, he's here. Chief, good morning. Good, good to morning. see you. Uh, How are you doing? I'm doing well. Great. Uh, I apologize for being a bit late. It's, it's uh, okay. Traffic was a bit unusual today. <laughs> I left at the same time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Sorry wow. about that. Anyway. Felix, so, wrap up for yeah. you on this Again, one, so. Well, ordinarily, if government borrowed $600 million to finance the cocoa sector mm -hmm. with a view to ramping up production, uh, there's little quarrel that one can pick with it. Okay. But we need to be wary of a situation where this government hides behind these institutions to borrow money to finance its own projects because they do not want it to be classified as public debt. Mm -hmm. Cocoa Board is going to do this on its own balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And because they are an organization that uh, comes across enormous resources over the years, mm -hmm. they do have a healthy balance sheet upon which they can borrow. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that government tends to leverage that in order to get money that it, it will not ordinarily get by raising on the capital market to finance its projects. They, they, so already, already. The, the this, breakdowns this, mean nothing to you? Well, I mean, every borrowing that comes before Parliament mm. comes with a breakdown. Okay. In fact, last year or so, um, GMPC, government provided to, uh, a guarantee for them to borrow $200 million. Mm. The minority at the time raised red flags and said that the breakdown that had been given was not sufficient and that mm. they suspected that government was using GMPC to borrow money to finance or uh, as it were, support its budget. There's another $750 million facility mm. that government took, which we suspect has also been used to finance the budget. Mm -hmm. There is a securitization of GET fund mm -hmm. for $1.5 billion. This government brought that agreement, took the agreement to parliament, and it was passed. As I speak to you, there is no indication what use that money has been put to. Um, in 2017, I believe, they went on a bond market to raise what they call energy bonds of 4.7 billion Ghana cities. And as I speak to you, there is no clear indication mm -hmm. of what that money has been used. Indeed, there are reports that part of it, about 600 million Ghana cities, has been used to pay pension uh, proceeds or funds. And so this raises questions about the utilization of these loans. Otherwise, if government goes to borrow money to finance the cocoa sector, it will not be a difficulty. But the point also is that this government has made a lot of noise mm. about the cocoa sector since they came into power. Right. And yet the output does not suggest that they've done anything extraordinary that has yielded anything positive results that yeah, seen before. Yesterday, the, the boss at the um, Cocoa Board, for example, said that um, around the time when you were sharing free fertilizers, we actually had a drop in the production but of But that cocoa. is false. You see, it is important for the Cocoa Board boss, and he is fond of dabbling in a lot of propaganda, regrettably. Look, the position he occupies is one that must come with candor. When he speaks, it must be authoritative. The facts don't bear out what he is saying. Mm. Check Cocoa Board's own website. You will find that in their own analysis, mm -hmm. the 2016-2017 crop year yielded almost 1 million metric tons of cocoa. Mm -hmm. That is not a drop. It is an increase from about 700,000 the previous year. Mm -hmm. And it stems directly from the interventions that the Mama administration made. Indeed, in 2011, we, we hit the 1 million metric ton mark. It is the only time that we've done so. So the NDC administration holds the record for the highest and second highest cocoa production in the history of Ghana. The MPP, in spite of all the talk, all the hoopla that has gone on, has been unable to match this. How much cocoa was yielded last year or the year before? It's around 800,000 metric mm. tons. So on what basis does the Cocoa Board CEO make these claims okay. when his own data on his own website mm. do not support uh, anyway, these claims? Let's bring Eric in. Eric, uh, so 600 million is, uh, is coming in to support the cocoa sector. Um, obviously to raise production, to look at cocoa roads, to look at farmer uh, data, to look at uh, extension offices and all of that. Now, Felix says it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice way to, to go and get money to come and do other things because ordinarily you won't get uh, this money. What do you say? Well, uh, thank you very much. Good morning to yourself. Good morning to Felix.
Uh, I haven't seen him for a while since he yeah. he, made, he merged victorious in his primary. Yeah, okay. Congrats. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, you but he still hasn't stopped the the usual propaganda. I mean, I would have expected that I would have discussed the the importance of the cocoa industry uh, to this economy. Right. I think that we all know that cocoa has be, has been the mainstay of this economy from mm -hmm. maybe 60, 70 years, best part of that. Yeah. And um, we should loud government for taking that bold initiative to ensure that the gains made in that particular sector is also built upon. Mm -hmm. I'm more happy with the whole concept of the value addition uh, bit. Right. And the amount of uh, employment that is actually going to create for young people. 200 million. Uh, and then also, you look at the fact that uh, most of the people that are going to be engaged are going to be engaged on the farms mm -hmm. and then ac across the value chain to ensure that the sector mm -hmm. becomes one of the, uh, the, still continue to be the best uh, in the economy. But then also, uh, not just being one of those things where we uh, farm our cocoa mm -hmm. beans and then just export it. Right. So for me, I think that it's really, it's neither here nor there. You see, the inconsistency in some of these arguments is what actually uh, makes me a bit uh, un un uncomfortable. For example, what? Yeah, for example, I mean, Felix and his people would be talking about uh, a Terminal 3 airport that has been built by uh, former President Mahama as a legacy, forgetting that the same principle that he's using, saying that uh, cocoa bodies is actually boiling on their own uh, balance mm, sheet, mm, mm. Uh, means that government actually wants to use this money for something totally different. different. I mean, come on, this is one unit, if you like, as a, as a country, as a government. Mm. And there are plenty of other examples. If, for instance, Gapoha built a hospital, again, based on its own balance, balance sheet, sheet or there's a Bank of Ghana uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. They were going around touting that that was part of their legacy and the kind of things that they have done. Mm -hmm. So for me, this argument about uh, you're not sure and this whole idea that there's something on top that's about to happen by virtue of the fact that government has gone on to support the cocoa board mm -hmm. to invest these money back into the sector. Mm -hmm. You know, so we should spend our time actually he's, deliberating. He actually says there's nothing to show for all the Yeah, but you see, he, he, can, he, can, he can say that. So, so, but so the, it doesn't point, it doesn't, he will, he will stop assuming. Listen, listen, you see, he can say that. I didn't expect Felix to come and sit here to be <laughs> touting <laughs> the uh, credentials mm -hmm. of Anakufadu government. Right. That would have been extremely strange, you understand? Mm -hmm. But you see, the facts, and I was happy that he spoke about parliament. Mm -hmm. Now, anything that, and again, quoting President Mahama, mm -hmm. Any loan that is actually taken in this country goes through parliament, it's approved by parliament, and you can go to parliament. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. That if we want to, as a country, we want to find out exactly what he used all those monies for, mm -hmm. we should go to parliament and ask them. Ask. Right? So why, why, is there, why is the consistency in this argument? My view is that there's like an economy that's on the right trajectory. You see, when you start doing this cocoa politics and either you have to give free fertilizer or you have to subsidize it for farmers mm -hmm. to buy. Mm -hmm. Where we know that in times past, mm -hmm. all of these fertilizers have actually found its way outside the shores of this country. And even in terms of productivity. Mm -hmm. You can go as far back mm -hmm. as when President Kufo became president of this uh, country. Mm -hmm. At the time, the highest uh, production that we've had in, cocoa, in the cocoa sector was around 300,000. <laughs> you understand? So if you're sitting here and all of a sudden, at the time that even President Kufo was leaving power, you're able to uh, increase it. But in any case, if you want to go back into the effect and the sort of impact that the uh, policies of the MPP administration has brought to the cocoa sector, mm -hmm. cocoa doesn't grow in a year. It doesn't grow in two years. Right. It doesn't grow in three years. So if you sit here and you came to power in, say, for instance, 2008, mm -hmm. Right, let's say the uh, uh, 7th of January 2009, and then you tout credentials mm. and achievements that in 2011 mm. you achieved 1 million metric tons of cocoa. When the things that had happened, the spraying gangs, mm. the pollination, the uh, cutting of the old trees and uh, planting new, new trees, and the support that went into the sector, 
and you bring it back to 2019, and you want to sit here and the farmers themselves. And sometimes it doesn't lie between me and uh, Felix or any politician to go out there and tout the achievements of the government. The farmers themselves will attest to the things that's been done. I have seen examples of these hand pollination mm -hmm. uh, exercise when they did it on a pilot basis. And I was amazed at the productivity levels, right? So if it's something that would, one, support the economy, mm -hmm. would support farmers, would create employment, would engender wealth creation mm -hmm. in the sector, would support the value addition mm -hmm. so that we don't export our raw beans, this whole idea of let's poo poo it, let's mm. do politics as usual. It's not the case. It's they, not the best. They, we they, should be discussing mm. the importance of these mm. interventions, for instance, they, they, and even for a, a party in opposition. Mm. You should be preferring alternative uh, they, they, solutions they, they, they and saying that, well, Eric, if it was us, we'll mm. probably invest the money in XYZ. Okay. Rather than saying, so he moved away from the question entirely. We're talking about Coco mm -hmm. and went on a different tangent. Eric, so the, the question I want to ask now is that the 68th New Year School of the University of Ghana, I remember that put together, you know, some of these things you're talking about, uh, spatial uh, data for farmers, extension offices, blah, blah, blah. And that has been lying on the, on the desk for, for quite some time. Why, why isn't government picking the recommendations of that, that document to say, in, you know, deal with? Because they have done all the extensive research. And I've been worried about it. I'm just asking on a note of curiosity that these are professionals who invite government. They have a New Year school. They put together a recommendation. And then yesterday, the Kokobosi was talking about something. And this has been said two, three years prior. And we are not picking it to No, but, but if you look at the, this particular intervention and what it, it, it seeks to, to do, it's basically to cure the same thing that the, uh, the report has been talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. It's not as if that we have not known that there are some challenges within the sector, mm -hmm. issues to do with solar and shoot. For, I come from a cocoa growing area, solar and shoot, issues to do with uh, the menace of Galam Blackboard Blackboard disease. and the, all mm -hmm. of those in blackboard diseases. And, people even cutting their cocoa trees and mm. growing rubber and all of those things. Now, when these things happen, mm. you need some kind of deliberate intervention to, one, stimulate growth within the sector. Mm. And then also even the, 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 the caliber of people who are actually indulged in cocoa farming activities, mm. uh, we all know that they become an older generation mm -hmm. by virtue of the fact that the youth over the period were not interested mm. in farming. Now, for me, this is going to serve as a catalyst mm -hmm. for growth in a sector. Like I said, I mean, if you look at the cocoa, uh, a whole chocolate industry, where it's about 180 billion or close to 200 billion a year. Mm -hmm. It's industry, 200 billion, actually. Industry. Mm -hmm. And then between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, who produce close to 70% mm -hmm. of the cocoa beans. Mm -hmm. And then we get just about 5 billion. Mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer. You know, and of course, we've done the talking over a period. Yeah. And of course, you can also do the politics. It's a no-brainer mm -hmm. that at this point in time in our history, we decide that we want to add value. Mm -hmm. We want to ensure that there's some level of value addition and uh, stimulate the value chain, right, so that we will also make the, enough the, the, the value revenue addition, from this The value addition then thing. will come with again, setting up factories uh, again, and, and all of that. Yeah, so now, the, one, one critical thing, sorry about that, but one critical thing is we keep talking about cocoa roads. If you look at the colonial days, they used to transport these raw materials via yeah, rail. Real, yeah. And it saved our roads mm. a great deal of, of mm. load mm. and, and wear and tear. Where are the rail lines? I know that <laughs> Honorable Jogati is working at it, it's but doing very well. if we are getting seedlings, we are getting fertilizers, we are getting extension offices, we are thinking of uh, upping our game within the cocoa space, where are the rail lines that will transport them from the hinterlands to the factories? But that's exactly what government is doing. But you know for a fact that it doesn't take three years to do the amount of rail lines that we, we require. But if you look at the amount of work that has actually gone on mm -hmm. at the Railway Development Ministry and the work that they have done thus far, it's commendable. But it's a multi-faceted mm -hmm. issue where that's what I'm saying that a more, if like general uh, big picture perspective mm -hmm. is needed to deal with this particular 
especially across the value chain. But I didn't, when we hear, talk about value I didn't hear an allocation for it in the 600 million. They, 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 they the real. real. No, but it's probably because the real have, has a totally different mm. budget. But the point really is that even apart from the real, the roads themselves okay. and other logistical support where there's warehousing uh, facilities. Mm. And now as I speak, there are warehouses in almost every single district in this country. But we can we really do more? Yes, mm. can we show that the, the access roads to our various farmsteads mm. are, are, are usable and all of those things? Those mm. are things that we can have. But that, that's a step that for me is in the right direction. Right. And I believe strongly that I don't remember mm. any time, apart from when President Kufour introduced this uh, mass cocoa spraying gangs mm. and all of those mm. things where another attempt like that has been made to ensure a total transformation of the cocoa sector. And I believe strongly that because of the uh, importance of this particular mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. actually, apart from the, uh, the revenue aspect of it, it's right. got sentimental, nostalgic what, value. What, what is the African Development people. Bank seeking in return for this? I, asked, I said favor. Felix says it's not a favor. Because they're getting 600 million from mm -hmm. them. Over what period, we have not been really told. But what are they asking for in return? There's no free lunch anywhere. No, of course, it's a, it's, I'm sure it's a loan. I, have, I don't have the full details mm -hmm. of the, the, the contract itself, but it's a loan. Of course, it's repairable over a period. Uh, the cocoa sector itself is very viable mm -hmm. and can basically cater for this. Now, once you reinvest, what it does is that it creates what they call a synergistic effect, mm -hmm. where you have more employment, new uh, uh, avenues for the generation of new products, mm -hmm. the value addition bit, creating employment, creating wealth. Okay. So really, it's a sector that has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. Even, mind you, if you look at the uh, performance of our exports, you look at non-traditional exports, for instance, you realize that cocoa, butter, mm -hmm. and all those other things are significant in terms of what we export. Now, you mm -hmm. have big companies in this country, Barry Calibot and a few other companies in the free zones enclave, already processing cocoa locally and exporting it to their various uh, so these are things that we can continue to Okay, do. okay. Great. Felix, take a well, final bite on this one. The problem I have with the MPP is that often their talk is not matched by action. How? You know, Eric says that we should restore the virtues of the cocoa sector and, and speak about its importance to the economy. You see, we are not here to recite platitudes. Everybody knows how germane the cocoa sector is to the Ghanaian economy. But there are material facts that one cannot overlook when analyzing that sector. But, but if, in if, relation the fact, if the facts are showing that you no, need to congratulate... But, but you see, there's nothing to congratulate them about. Eric, if, if you allow Eric, allow Eric. You see, there's nothing really to congratulate them about. 600 million Well, I, I, if, if you allowed me to make my point. You see, okay. anybody at all can get money on the capital market to finance a particular sector. Mm. So that in itself is not a significant achievement. Already, since they've been in power, they have had access to at least $2 billion in syndicated loans. Mm. The outcome of which have not been as spectacular as we expect. Mm. I spoke to you about the production levels. In 2016-2017, right. we produced close to a million tons, mm. metric tons. Mm. Last year, they were only able to produce 750,000 metric tons, which is a drop of almost 200,000 metric That's tons. No, let me make my point. Yes. Again, now it is, not, it is not difficult to appreciate why we have recorded this dwindling fortunes. If you look at the facts, and the devil is in the detail, if you look at the expenditure patterns, you will find that whereas we focus more on direct investments in cocoa production, they have tended to put more money in administrative expenses, mm. not least because they have gone on an employment spree and employed every term they can hurry they can mm. at Cocoa Board and other Vantage uh, uh, institutions. For instance, if you look at the 2016 breakdown, we spent as much as 316 million Ghana cities on disease and pest control. Mm. We spent 160.4 million Ghana cities on the rehabilitation of nurseries and mm -hmm. seedlings. Mm -hmm. In terms of fertilizer application alone, we spent 355 million Ghana cities on it. Mm -hmm. And then on cocoa roads, we spent 592 million Ghana cities. Now, what has been the story since the MPP has been in power? In 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. they spent 198 million on disease and pest control, control when we spent 360 million the preceding year. They spent only 58.5 million Ghana cities on the rehabilitation of nurseries and seedlings when mm -hmm. we spent 160 million. In terms of fertilizer application, we actually gave out the fertilizer for free. They are at 
and they spent 153.5 million Ghana cities. When we spent 355 million Ghana cities, as for Cocoa Roots, no, but, this, oh, but let me make no, one point. I, 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 as, as, for, point as for Cocoa Roots, Roots, they spent zero, zero. They actually froze all the ongoing Cocoa Root projects. They spent $10 million mm. conducting frivolous audits, which turned out nothing. As your, I speak your, to you, no your, adverse your, finding has your, been made. Your point is? Again, if it comes to administrative expenses, mm. that is monies that go to finance the creature comforts of Cocoa Board officials and pay uh, salaries and other expenses in the office. In 2016, we spent 363 million mm. for the Cocoa Board headquarters. They have spent 537 million in 2017 alone. Now, they, we, in 2016. What, the, these figures that you're quoting. But they, they but, 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 yeah, what, yeah, what was the condition of the economy? Oh, what condition are you talking about, please? You see, the point is that we are talking about a specific sector. Okay. Now, I'm telling you that when we were in power, we mm. produced this much cocoa. Ten, ten I'm giving cities, you... Ten cities in 2010. It's not the no, same no, as no. Well, ten cities in 2016. Well, that would be because they have mismanaged the exchange rate. So, our currency has taken a nose dive. So when you mismanage the exchange rates and the currency takes a nosedive, you don't turn around to use that justification. But not necessarily. As time no, moves on, no, no. the, the value of about, money reduces. You are talking about the time, the net present value of money. But that does not come into this equation. I'm, I'm speaking to you in CD terms. But, not but, but you are mentioning 2017 yes, figures. And I'm saying it is that just a year the apart. value of it, 2016 no, no, no. 10 CDs and 2017 it, 10 CDs No, if different. I was comparing CDs to dollars, you okay. can cite the exchange rate differential. Okay. I'm speaking to you in CD terms. Mm. So we are comparing like to like. The issue of net present value does not arise. Mm. That's the point. Yeah. And again, in any event, it's only a year's difference. Mm. Now, when you come to quali the quality control department, this, we spent 102.8 million Ghana cities in 2016. Mm. They have spent 155 million Ghana cities on the quality control, quality control department. And yet, what are the outcomes? Whereas we produce close to a million tons, they have produced only 750,000 metric tons. Okay. So really, they have not justified all the investments that mm. have been made in them. And they are going for more money. And indeed, the minority has indicated that you, they have You have doubts that the money will well, be used for the minority has indicated for. that they, they have spotted some anomalies mm. in the agreement that has been brought before them. So they will be scrutinizing it and pointing them out. But I spoke to you about the need to be wary okay. of a government that uses state agencies mm. as leverage to borrow money to finance their budget mm. because they do not want those monies to be classified Eric as says you are debt. poo pooing for nothing. I'm no, not poo pooing. I'm not poo pooing. You see, you see, to but whom, you're giving him to a whom, second to whom much is given, no, to whom much is given, yeah. much is expected. Okay. So Let, when I give you 1.5 billion dollars as as process of securitization mm, of get fund, mm. I expect a certain outcome. When I give you 200 million dollars as money given to GMPC, I expect a certain outcome. When I give you 84 billion Ghana cities over three years in borrowed money, I expect a certain outcome. When I don't see that outcome. I have the right to question okay. your ability to manage the economy. You and that is precisely exactly what we let, let the viewers also have a bite on this, and then Eric will take a bite. Exactly. And so, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Johnny. NDC claimed they borrowed to do infrastructure and still couldn't finish the E block and the hospitals. So, where's the money? In their green book, some E blocks um, claimed to have been built in Tepa are not in existence. Okay. Good morning, TV3. NPP government, that's false. Okay. Good morning, TV3. MPP government has nothing to offer us. Let's vote NDC back to power. Okay, but they are speaking for you this time. Are you saying they shouldn't vote for you as well? Okay. <laughs> that's from Kaka Tamil. Yeah, he said absolutely false. So that's what I'm asking. So this time they should vote for you. I was responding to him. So they should vote for you. Oh, absolutely. We have we have an impeccable track record. Much better than what they're doing. Because this one is good on the TV. Every big government has nothing to offer. Let's vote and be recognized. And he said that's absolutely false. I said that I was responding to Eric, not Kaka Tamil. We hear you. Walanyo in Akwetia says Koko sector to get a huge. Huge, uh, such a huge amount in order to boost production is in order, and let us extol the government for this great move. A.U. Farouk Tamale says, good morning. If government is not spending, how can the economy be stable? Government must start putting better policies, policies to stabilize the economy. What is Felix talking about? If his family member had been employed in the cocoa sector recently, he would have appreciated what is happening. Kwame Na from Tema. Good morning, Johnny and your panelists, especially Felix Ofosu. This government is borrowing. Borrowing but nothing to show. Hmm. Chop chop government. 2020 will uh, judge this government accordingly. That, that's by Med 
Kampaha. John Neal and Tevanda Poy says Eric should give us a break. I mean, injecting money into the cocoa industry to boost productivity is a laudable move. But is it a talk shop that they pay lip service to? Or will the positive impact of it really be felt by the, uh, for the first time in MPP's history? And finally, good morning, TV3. Please ask Felix to tell us what major projects the NDC undertook when they were in power for eight years in Biakuye in Volta region, now OT region, from Francis in Biakuye district okay. uh felix you, you want to take a bite on that one no, but, uh, the no no you have you okay, have your sure. second thing well in fact I'll, 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 I'll just not zero down on biakuye no no they the, want to hear from biakuye. well i mean look the water region alone okay out of the 200 uh, 123 community based schools that mm. we began they got 11 okay. out of it mm. uh we gave the water region the uh, water university or the university okay. of health and allied mm. sciences mm. if you go to who we give them an ultra modern market we did roads, we did water projects, and a number of them. Indeed, there is no government that can claim to have done more in mm. terms of capital investment than the NDC government led by President Mahama okay. under the Fourth Republic. Okay. It is an incontestable fact. Thank you. And the MPP are yet to match up to that. Thank level. you very much. Let, Eric, take a second bite on this one quickly, and then maybe we'll look at one small issue, and then we'll... Well, well you see, I mean, it's quite um, strange that even when... Uh, we travel ar around the country mm -hmm. where everywhere you go, Ghanaians are clamoring for uh, infrastructure projects and mm -hmm. roads and all sorts of things. Where uh, prior to the 2016 elections, mm -hmm. we had a book that was being bandied around that suggested that all the roads in this country had been fixed. Mm -hmm. That is a and false. Now, I mean, all of a sudden, I'm all just, but that was quiet when you speak. But I mean, yeah, I'm very, yes, and, and that all of a sudden, uh, these roads are nowhere to be found. John, but you, you see, to, you need to check for, me. But, 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 see, we have yeah, never said anything. Let me, let me, let me make, let me, let me make, let me make my point. Let me, let me, the green book. Can I make my point? Can I make, that's some people, that's some people who have said that there are things in the green book which was Look, a lot of them, some hospitals, a lot of those people. And then Eric, communities and Eric, 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 that Eric, 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 let, let me make this Johnny intervention Johnny quickly, and then, yeah. and then you. Johnny, all right. Look, let me challenge anybody mm. from President Akufuado to the last person in the MPP to point me to a single mm. project in the Green Book that doesn't exist. Look, all the pictures in the Green Book, I personally commissioned mm. a photographer to take them. But do I listen? No, so, but that's so so somebody from the passes. Look, look, yes. look <laughs> you see, the MPP, the MPP make mockery of themselves mm. when they say that the pictures in the green book are photoshopped, and yet their president goes about commissioning some of them. The Kumasi, the KJTR markets. Mm. Mm -hmm. We had an artist impression no, of it yeah, in the green book. Okay, President no, Akufuado no, went to open it. So, the time, ten, ten so when you make claims that are false, the, the, that, the that from are Tepa, the gentleman from from mm -hmm. Tepa says that your that you put you, you're supposed to have put up a hospital there is not there. Yes, but there's a there's a, a district hospital project going on in Tepa under the UAJ project. But he says that <laughs> it's shown in a book, book that yes. is completed. That is false. We it's, never said anywhere in the book that is false. Thank you. That those projects started sometime in 2010. Okay, Listen, but okay. we're not completed before. Okay. We the, have never the cleaned various, okay. the various, completely for the, the various communities. Mm -hmm. Where these That's why you can't even show a single point where, you go to Allow him, allow him. I think your intervention has been noted, so please allow him. The various communities yeah. where these projects were meant to be would come out and tell you if those projects really existed or not. But the projects exist. Yeah, what is the now, challenge see, here? There's no challenge. Now, I mean, because MPP fanatics because are selling the problem. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're being disruptive. Please, allow him. 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 Listen. Now, it's every government's responsibility, and it's President Akufuado's responsibility to ensure that if Ghanaians are clamoring for these projects, we will do them. Mm. We will fix them. But the NDC as an alternative is an, is an extremely scary one. You see, why, now, why are you not showing the ones that you have done? It, 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 why are you not showing the ones that you have done? It abounds everywhere. Why are you not showing them? Listen, what do you mean why are we not showing them? You sit here, you sit, listen, allow me. Johnny, allow me. Allow me. Yes, yes, yes. Even in the education sector alone, right, the education ministry has 800 805. We have over different 2,000. Let me finish. 2,000. Let me finish. 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 Let me finish.
of these uh, interventions have been made. Just in the education sector alone. Mm. You can drive around. I live around the Adrigano area towards Ashalibutri. Look at the roads. Go through Ashanti region. Look at what the, uh, uh, the railway sector is doing. Look at what has happened the, in the... And, and yet there are people uh, on the, and the roads yeah, every but, time but, asking but, for their roads to be fixed. They're demonstrating in Volta, also, in Boku, it, in the are, Western region. Are, I agree. Those are legitimate concerns. Mm. And government has decided and has made it a clear responsibility to ensure that those roads are fixed. Recently, in the last couple of, 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 of days, 2.2 billion Ghana cities has been released for the road sector. Are you going to, to publish pay. a blue book or a red book? No, but it is not. You see, for me, I've always maintained, and that's my position, I've always maintained that you can publish a, a green book. For instance, I come from Abompe. If you fix, you, you do what they, this, our friends used to call Circle Dubai, mm. right? And you put it in a green book. It has absolutely no... Uh, direct impact in my life. Really? You understand? Because when my people live in Abompe, they probably will not use this uh, circle divide for, they want to know what interventions will directly affect their lives. Like the factories. And, and, like the factories. Exactly. And where are the well, factories? Listen, listen. Even recently. And where are the factories? Recently. Mm. In my uh, infantia canoff, just a couple of weeks ago when the president went on the Eastern Region tour, there's a, a cassava processing uh, factory that has been set up in Begro within the enclave. You go through the Accra commercial road. When you get to Glowfet, mm. there's a fertilizer factory that is being put so, up there. So that will, make, that, to, that will put a total of how many factories out of the, the no, I'm just 260 giving you at the time? The, 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 the ministry has come out and told you exactly where these factories are. Okay. And I, I feel that as part of the responsibility for both as, as political actors mm. and you as a media, maybe you can commission a team to go out there and see for themselves. Okay. It is not up to government to okay. Johnny, always say that, well, Johnny, this is um, there, this okay. is there. Because the community themselves, so, the people who are being affected directly, they will be the ones to say. our friends mm. discount everything. Let me tell you something. We had a government that took us to the IMF, where we had six, for, for five to six years, young graduates who have left our university did not have any work. But you stayed now, with the you did, IMF. No, let me, you let me. stayed with the no, IMF. But, but, no, no, but you see, Johnny, no, don't, don't, don't feed, I, I'm don't, not don't feed I'm into just, the I'm propaganda. Just, I'm just doing We didn't stay with I'm the IMF. The IMF stuff. had a certain no. time frame for it to elapse. You were okay. meant to meet certain it's conditions and preconditions. Oh, it is true. It's not true. And even, even, and even, and even, listen, listen, listen. And even, 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 the requirements. Felix, Felix, you're being extremely disruptive. Even the requirements. And the conditions not that were meant to have been met mm. for that to have happened. The NDC did not even meet one. You didn't meet it either. They a were waiting for you. They were waiting for you. What do you mean, though? Yes, yeah. but and you see, you, 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 you make claims that are false. Okay. 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 You, you were saying you yes. have 2,000 schools. Is it? Where, where first of all, first of all let me dismiss this ridiculous joke that the MPP is engaging about the Green Book. The claim that we put in things that are not on the ground in the Green Book is absolutely false. And I'm challenging That's the a president. Textile. It's not there. But you see, the, the texter is peddling false. That's what I've told you. Mm. In Tepa, there is a project called the Eurojet District Hospital Project. Mm. It is in the Green Book. We didn't say it was completed. We said it was ongoing. Okay. Again, he speaks about 800 classroom blocks. First mm. of all, go and check the document that he presented to Parliament mm. to secure that $1.5 billion that I spoke to you about using GetFund as collateral. They themselves see that they came to meet over 700 classroom projects that were uncompleted. So they were borrowing the money to complete it. So these were not even projects that they started. We, on the other hand, completed over 2,000 classroom blocks. Mm -hmm. So if you, even if we were to grant that the 800 classroom projects mm -hmm. were originated by them, it is a huge joke compared to what we did. 2,000 again, so again, 2, 000, 2, 000 classroom eight. blocks. Yes, but of course. That, that, that were not accessible to persons with disability. <laughs> oh. That did they have washrooms. No, no, no. No, I'm not please, shifting. Please, please, please. I'm saying that don't, in the 21st don't, century, don't, don't, if, you put a, if you put up a classroom a block, no, no, no. Oh, it should be... Don't. It should be accessible it, no, to persons no, no. with disability, and it should have Look, washrooms. I acknowledge that we need to take care of persons with disability. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that, but don't shift the goal. But that is not the. Oh no, but it's, it's inclusive. We, no, I all agree. inclusive I, I agree. education. Agreed. Agreed. Launched under your Agreed. regime, but it does not mean that we did not put up two thousand classroom blocks. That's the point that I'm making. Again, I heard him speak about the railway sector. Look, the biggest projects in the railway sector. Mm. There are two of them. The first one is the Takrade Secondi Kojukrum Railway Project, right. commissioned by President Mama in 2016. Mm -hmm. 
The next one <laughs> is the tema. Oh, please, 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 please. The next one. This is where oh, people are getting stuck in the please, in please, the quota please, 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 when they went to commission. And for the two, next three one, years, the next one, the next one. It wasn't completed. Oh, please, it was. It wasn't. You the can ask the, the contractors. The president took a train ride. Mm. The next one is the tema to Akosomo railway project. It's an 81 kilometer project. Okay. President Mama took $398 million from the Indian Exim Bank. Mm. When he commissioned the Kujokum, sorry, the Takwadi Secondary Kujokum project, he actually said in his speech that in March of 2017, the Tema to Akusomo Rail project was going to start. Mm. Those are the two biggest projects currently so, cited so in the, 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 the rail sector. Anything. I'm not saying he's not doing anything, but I'm saying oh, what he's oh, doing oh, in oh, terms of its oh. substance and in terms of its gravity mm. pales into insignificance compared to what really the NDC did. That is again, really true. Again, 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 what have we decided on? Again, again, this fixation with bastardizing the Green Book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, I am challenging him. Let him name for you one major hospital that they built. I can cite 10 off the top of my head. Let him tell you okay. one major water project they've done. I can cite 20. Let him tell you anything they've done in the aviation sector. The most significant investments in the aviation sector have been done under the NDC, Terminal 3. Because of that, we are classified as having the best airport in the whole of West Africa. They claimed that it was a Photoshop project when we first spoke about it. The president was so embarrassed that he could not even go to commission it because he knew that immediately people will collect the claims that he made about that project when they were in opposition. So okay. you get so much money, you are unable to show substantively what you've done with it. And then you turn around and dispute material evidence that exists of performance by a previous government. This that is morning, what kind of This morning, I'm sure have. the Ghanaian watching us will not be interested in NDC and MPP. They will be no, interested of course, in, but, in but, how but this they'll be reflects interested in, the facts. in their lives. They will be interested in, in the their facts lives. and but how it's impacting. Because why? When you go to reach today, mm. those who are on admission and are receiving no, treatment, they will tell you that it is impacting their lives. But it's being managed well by somebody. It doesn't matter. You must give credit to. It is a matter of course. It is a matter of course. You can go as far back as 2008. Again, he doesn't know. No, who doesn't? No. Look, where it took disruptive this morning. Because time is up, so consistency last one. Consistency is key in this whole game, right? I think that like everybody would appreciate governance is a continuum. Absolutely. Right? You come in, you do what you you're you're meant to do. Of course, if a project has been initially you will start, you will continue right and complete it. That's it. Even the free, the so-called e-blocks, mm. right? The guys of the uh, Ghana Education Service and the Ministry will tell you how many of them we had to come and complete. Okay. You understand? Mm. So, I mean, this whole thing is neither here nor there. The truth of the matter is that if you do a comparative analysis mm. of the, uh, the, 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 the the sort of the performance of the economy mm -hmm. over the period. Mm -hmm. And we just suppose that mm -hmm. against yeah, what the NDC and the NPP. Even within three but years. You were speaking about you. Every single one of them okay. we have. You were speaking about you. Now, you, 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 you have not. You thank you, Jeff. You have not. You have not. You have not. It's a baby of President Kofi. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It would be a travesty. Eric Chu is a member of the NPP. It would be a travesty if I don't correct it. President Kofi was the money. Was it a problem? Parliament or not? It was. took a loan agreement to parliament yes. for 386 million dollars uh -huh. to do eight hospitals uh -huh. in 2008. Yes. That money, however, did not come. Mm. So in 2014, President Mohammed's government issued promissory notes mm. for the contractor to raise bonds on the you, market. You mentioned to that earlier. Mm. So yes, it is true that President Kufu had attempted to get money, no, but that mean? money fell through. That is why the projects delayed. None, and started, of, none of that money came. None of it came. That's why the projects delayed and started in 2014. Okay. So really no, speaking, it was President Mills, it, Mr. No, Eric no, Chuan, no, as a no, member no, of no, the no, 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 NPP's no communication team, and, 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 and be on the lookout for him. The Fantiaqua South area. But I wish him well. Be on the lookout for him. He says he's not gotten the green light yet, but we know that he has interest. So we wish him well. But there are reports that he's been leaned on. To. Thank you very much. The race. Oh, he's been <laughs> leaned on. Yeah. No, no, he's well, a proud, yeah. he's a strong blow. We, we don't, we don't give off. Well, like I hope that, that he, yeah. he stands so, his ground. So, so Eric, thank you very much for coming. Thank and you. the Honourable mm -hmm. Felix Ofosu Kwachi or Kwachi Ofosu is the parliamentary candidate for the Abura Esibu Kwamankese uh, in the central region, and is also a former deputy minister right. for communication. Thank you very much. Thank I wish you well. Thank you. Very I much. wish you well. Nice. Uh, and congratulations on your. Thank you very much, Eric. Shake hands. All right, bro. Politics strongest. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you after the break. <laughs>